因我欢迎出席会议嘅团体代。All right, let me welcome、uh, deputations, representatives, and individuals. I will invite you to speak one by one and. For representatives of deputations and individuals, each of you will be given three minutes to speak or ask questions. And to facilitate the conduct of the meeting, the secretariat has already、um, made available、um, a beeping device and a timer. And I remind deputations and individuals again that for the written submissions and the speech given. By you, you will not be protected by the protection under Cap 382, Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Before I invite deputations to speak, some colleagues、uh, just now ask why, for such an important meeting, the Secretary for Development is not attending. And I'd like to invite the PS to、uh, reply. The Secretary cannot、uh, do all the work himself, and but in fact he is just、uh, in his room listening into the meeting. All right. Thank you. Of course, he can be at a different place. But he should respect this meeting as well. Well,、uh, the inquiry is important as well. But on come,、uh, when the inquiry is over, he should come here、um, immediately. We have、uh, over 130 deputations、uh, for this week and next week, and、um, he is a, a, an accountable official. So,、uh, P.S. You should get,、uh, pass him a、uh, note telling him to come over as soon as the hearing is over. So, Mr. Liu Kuaua、uh, from Shuangshuihang Village, a representative of Shuangshuihang Village. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning. I am a member of the North District Council. I'm also a Shuangshuihang Village representative. I'm Liu Kuaua. In this NNT NDA development, a sewage treatment. Uh, well, uh, a plant will be built next to Shuangshuihang Village, and I understand that、uh, toxic gas and other toxic substances will be released、uh, by the sewage treatment plant, and this will cause、um, pollution as well as harm to our physical health. It's just 104 meters away from the local residents. Whereas for the Shatin Shui Treatment Works, it's 350 meters away from the residential area, so there is a big difference. And there is such、uh, a big septic tank; it's like a time bomb. And I think that the planning department has ignored the situation of local residents and the health. And the living、uh, standards of、um, local residents. In August this year, our four representatives of Shuangshuihang Village met with the planning department and the CEDD, and to the southwest end of Lowu Road, we inspected a site. And the site、um, is a vast area of vacant land, and we think that the site should be sufficient for sustainable development. Whereas for the chosen site, it is very small; it can accommodate a few years' development, and the administration also. Thought that it's feasible.、Uh, they've told us that they needed to conduct a detailed stud,、uh, review. So, I urge the administration to put people first and 
the sewage treatment plant should be situated far away from the residential area. Another village representative of Shen Shui Han, Mr. Liu Heng Hong. Chairman members, good morning. I am a, a representative of the Shen Shui Han village. Now, about the NENT and DA study, there are two major impacts to the Shen Shui Han village. First of all, for the expansion, of the sewage treatment plant, it's not appropriate to continuously expand the uh, sewage treatment works into the vicinity of the Shen Shui village because it impinges upon the livelihood uh, or the uh, living standard of local residents. It's just 104 meters away from the residential area. It should be moved towards the southwest of Lowu Road because the space there is larger and sustainable development can take place there to accommodate future increase in population. At the same time, it can also mitigate the impact on the environment. Second point in the NENT development. Space originally reserved for village development uh, is now being planned for police facilities, transport facilities, public housing, etc. As for um, other pieces of land, um, they are also planned for private property development with retail and commercial facilities. It's clearly a deprivation of uh, the village's rights. If this kind of planning is acceptable, then I ask you a favor. Please allow the Shang Shui Hang a V zone to address our housing needs. We should not develop for the sake of development. A balance should be struck between different demands. Now, for the sewage treatment works, it has been excluded by the planning department. And that is an appropriate spot for the V song. Thank you. Next, from Shang Shui Hang, Mr. Liu Taiwan. Thank you, Chairman. My two brothers have made it clear. Shang Shui Hang's primary concern is the sewage treatment works. It has far reaching impact on us. So I reiterate that we are against the sewage treatment works expansion. We request that it be relocated to somewhere else. According to the public engagement exercise stage three, if the land use is changed or reduced, I mean, the scope can be narrow, but uh, I really have questions about that. Um, we produce uh, per capita 400 liters of sewage. And now the area is um, 90,000 um, square meters or so. And if we carry out sewage works for Shan Shui Hang as well, then by 2030, with increased population, then roughly speaking, uh, the area would amount to 180 square meters or cubic meters. So, despite the exponential increase, you say that the area can be reduced. Uh, I really have doubts about it. So,
Why don't you identify another site to properly relocate the sewage treatment works? Now, one of our concerns is that today you might exclude um, an area from the planning or rezone it as green belt, but in the future, will you stealthily change the land use of a particular site and uh, expand the sewage treatment works there? The existing plant is very small, and we have been uh, tolerating the expansion. It's now several times bigger than the original sewage plant. If further expansion takes place in the future, it's very unfair to Shen Shui Hang. Another point is for the slaughterhouse. Originally, well, it was said that there wouldn't be much impact, but well, allow me to say a few words more. I just want to invite you to understand the situation. Uh, in the mornings, if you go to Po Wan Road and stand there, well, please uh, provide a written submission if you want to give a speech. Just a few more words. If you say that there is no impact, say you can jog along that path, and when you reach that spot, you can take a deep breath and um, see what it smells like. Next, Miss. Liu Fu Sao from Shen Shui Hao Village. Thank you. Now, for Shen Shui Hao, the biggest problem is sewage treatment works. I have with me the statistics, um, which uh, I have downloaded from the Sha Tin Sewage Treatment Works website. The Sha Tin site, was, uh, the Sha Tin plant was built in 1982, covering 28 hectares of land. And so, serving residents in Sha Tin and Mangon Shan, it has a daily capa capacity of 250,000 cubic meters. That is to say, per capita, the daily sewage tr production is uh, 0 0.41 cubic meters. Now, it's 30 years from 1982, and in March, the Lechko discussed the Shatin treatment works. Um, there is a set of minutes for this uh, discussion item. The NENTNDA development will be completed by 2031. So, is it the case that the 30 years down the road you would need to? Uh, relocate or build another sewage treatment plant, and in 2010, the administration spent five uh, billion odd dollars in beautifying the Shatin treatment works for the increase in population. At present, uh, in the North District, there is a population of 316,000. As estimated by the district council annually, the population will increase by 2,800 to 3,000. Kutong North. 28,700 units more will be produced, and the population will increase by 81,900. As for Fanning North and Kutong North, according to the figures, each unit can accommodate 2.8 people. Is that public housing or private housing? If it's public housing, then the household won't be eligible because the family size is so small. In 2013, excluding tourists The population intake will be 561 and 700, and the uh, sewage produced every day will be 21.9 cubic
cubic meters. So um, it will reach its capacity. It won't deal with uh, so much switch. Can, can I say a few words more? For the existing treatment plant, it only has a capacity of 10, um, li 10 uh, liters. So uh, will it be able to serve this population? Uh, thank you. Mr. Professor Liu from Hong Kong Institution of Engineers. Our institution is very concerned with the shortage of land to which that's why we think the government should as early as possible identify land for this development. For the interest of our community, our institution thinks that NENT development project is a good one, but our institution has following points to make. From the perspective of engineers, now we may not have lots of slopes in the area, but to safeguard public safety, we propose that residential areas should be as far away from the natural slopes as possible unless the government can ensure these slopes are safe. Second point, some of the land for development are quite remote, for example, Ping Che Taku Ling. We think the administration should provide proper transport to facilitate residents moving about. Thirdly, the administration should propose reasonable compensation and rehousing arrangement. Reasonable compensation should be made to ensure the lifestyle of residents can be kept and so they will not be subject to very serious impact. All in all, the administration should listen carefully to public views and analyze those put forward by the stakeholders. And bear in mind the overall interest of Hong Kong people. It should also be decisive in rolling out the development plan. Thank you. Mr. David Wong from New People's Party. I'm from New People's Party. On behalf of my party, I have the following points to make. According to the present timetable, the preliminary planning will only start next year, and it's only by 2020, in 2020, 10 years down the road, that the first batch of residents will move in. It's too slow. We understand that the administration has to meet certain legal requirements and technical requirements, but we hope it can compress compress the timetable to respond to the needs of public. We understand that industrial development mainly focus in Kutong North and Ping Che Taokuling. 14 hectares in Kutong North will be for R&D development and some other land will be for the development for the loop. 30 hectare in Takuling will be for special industries. Now, we find the direction agreeable, but development trends globally uh, across the world is subject to changes. That's why we think we do not have to have over planning in terms of industrial development. As for the building of logistic um, yard or reserve land for containers, we don't think is agreeable because production cost in, is high in Hong Kong. We should focus on intelligence industry. We are not very competitive in low value industry. That's why we should reserve land for a high value added industry. Our party stressed once more that the government should take a holistic approach in the development and consider the development in a neighboring area, for example, the development of 
boundary areas and the Lokmachau Loop Scientific Park and the areas of Shenzhen and universities. We should also roll out tax concessions and set out clear economic strategy to maximize industrial development. Our comments, Mr. Chairman, mainly concern strategic issues. Uh, we need to plan on a long-term basis to confront the challenges that face Hong Kong. And we therefore put great store in the long-term housing strategy and the work of the steering committee on population policy that are in combination intended to identify the main social, economic and policy challenges facing Hong Kong over the next 30 years. This is of particular importance given the current emphasis on overcoming the shortage of built space, improving the land utilization rate and moves to expedite the process of supplying new housing units across the board. Um, with regard to government's proposals for NDAs, um, we would like to underscore several aspects of consideration. In terms of actual housing need, in terms of overall need, there is a requirement to ensure the active mobility of the entire housing stock in order to reduce the sizable number of empty units in the territory. There should also be an overall move to increase home ownership and reduce the 30% of the population in public rental accommodation and the issue of housing quality as well as quantity needs to be addressed. In terms of land policy, land resumption is extremely expensive and it's necessary to ensure that development intensity and use equates with cost effectiveness for both NDAs and land banks. Innovative solutions, we feel, might be required to stimulate developers to actually build on their own extensive land banks, but options should be kept open uh, for a mixed approach of conventional, that is to say the old type of new town development uh, resumption approach, but also public-private partnerships in order to minimize the colossal resumption and engineering costs involved. The projected need for land supply in the short and medium term should be equated with government's expanded land sales and lease modification programs, which is likely anyway to substantially augment the supply of new housing. Industrial land uses associated with the NDAs must also be fully justified in terms of projected demand. We feel also that carbon reduction strategies such as compact urban design, environmentally friendly transport networks, effluent reuse systems and green urban fringe activities should be encouraged through incentives to make layouts efficient and user responsive. And all efforts should be made to resolve the issue of small house entitlements and the extensive long-term land requirements associated with this, as this is completely untenable given the shortage of potential development land. In terms of social dissonance, um, clearance of households has in the recent past caused major social disturbance, massive costs associated with land compensation and excretion allowances, often at several times the normal rate. We feel that enhancing rewards at massive public cost to one group of stakeholders in order to supposedly balance the needs of another need, uh, should not be taken lightly as this polarizes society and it must be equated with the real need. And finally, the process of public engagement must be made more effective and participatory, involving stakeholders in active and creative dialogues in order to build up public consensus, support and commitment. Thank you. Oh. 大家好,今天我是想跟大家说一下空间工业的问题 Now you say you, the living style can be kept, but we know it's not going to happen. In terms of development, the government says this is for urban development and to upgrade living standard. But then the whole place will be filled with concrete blocks. Is it what you call upgraded living style? You said you encourage people to farm, but then you now resume lots of farmland. You are narrowing the room for living for these people. These residents 
are here to tell you that making money is not the most important thing. They have a job they like, they have a living style they like, and now you have already removed this um, lifestyle for those in Choyun village. You have also taken away memories of Hong Kong people. We are here to tell you we would like to have a room for ourselves. I am a year two student from Poly Univers Polytechnic University. Uh, one day I listened to, uh, I went to a seminar on integration between mainland and China. The speaker said, as long as there's profit to ma be made, Hong Kong people will say yes. But as she said, uh, the residents are um, making a protest because they do not get the reasonable compensation. I agree to her. I agree with her. And I'm here to listen to to speak out of curiosity. Last weekend, we went to Taikulang village to draft speeches for the villagers. They told us how long they've been living there. Every single one of them told us about that and how and their sense of belonging to the place. I was really surprised because the indigenous residents love the place they live in. Whereas for us city dwellers, it's just uh, very usual for us to move homes. Hong Kong is changing too rapidly. Lots of buildings cannot be kept, so people do not tend to feel a sense of belonging. But then uh, in the new territories, I think uh, people with a sense of belonging to uh, the place they live in, this is what I call a national education. I'm a, st st a representative from Lingnan University Student Christian Movement. The government says this plan is to address the long-standing housing needs of Hong Kong people. Now, you face lots of opposition and community study tells you you have lots of land in the urban area for housing development. Still, the government identify land in the new territories for such development and you chase away lots of um, local residents. You bulldoze over all these. How come the government is not revealing information of land reserve in the urban area to alleviate our worries? The plan covers over 700 hectares in NENT and you will drive away loss of local residents. Under these circumstances, if the, gov the government says you are not colluding with the developers and there is no integration between Hong Kong and mainland, we've been discussing it for a long time. How come the government does not consult the local residents? Some of the local residents only came to know about this development in the past few months, and they haven't been involved in the consultation. The government says the government is not really committed to taking in their views. Up to this day, the Secretary for Development cannot undertake what he means by Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong people. What's the ratio? 50 percent? It seems to me that they think uh, selling a Hong Kong is just justifiable. Mr. Roy Tam, I'm from Green Sands. For us, we do not think it's good for you to locate so many uh, relocate so many people in the bordering boundary area. You propose to have three NDAs in NENT. This is not reasonable. And you cannot enhance the frequency of East Rail trains. Under these circumstances, we propose to the development of the golf course so you don't have to develop the three NDAs. We urge the government to consider 
media misquote that the land lease for the Gulf Coast will only expire by 2020. But then, out of public interest, the land can be resumed with one year's notice. Now, you do not have to pay compensation in resuming the Gulf course. So, how come the government does not identify this lot for development? Are you going to reserve the land for rich people to play golf and you resume the land of the poor? It's very unfair in the land policy. The government has not taken any proactive role in the development of land property over MTR station. In above Wang Chukhang MTR station, all the flats will be for luxury housing. But then Wang Chukhang used to have public housing estates. How come it's turned into private housing property? Above Taiwei, you also have lots of flats, uh, 2,800 flats above the station. How come with so many flats you cannot turn some of them into public housing flats? You had such examples before for Cornhill and another housing estate. It was done. For two housing estates about MTR stations, half of the flats were public housing, the other half pub, uh, private. Do you think the property developers will build reasonably priced housing? In fact, the major supply of flats will come from development above MTR stations. If you take that into account, you may not need the NENT development. Otherwise, you are simply allocating land for luxury develop, uh, luxury house, housing and private housing development. Don't keep rolling out policies. That is confusing to us. Can you turn the flats into a uh, can you make use of the flats above MTR stations? Mr. Xu Xinpo, the king of leftists, so he's called, of the Central Policy Unit, he said he's going to wage war, um, um, public opinion war with uh, the people. Now, this is still a plan, this is a concept, but now you're trying to impose it on the people. You're trying to make people see your point and what your policy objective is so that the people would not oppose the government. Now, in the... Now, um, we all have uh, watched that uh, TV commercial on TV about the um, NDA study, but we see this is a preposterous plan. And there is no yet con consensus among the public. We do not know whether it will be implemented. There are still so many rumors that have yet to be addressed. So how come the government could actually do political uh, propaganda at this point? This TV commercial is not about helping the public understand the policy objectives of the government, but rather it's just a brainwashing campaign. Now, you s the uh, government says that the uh, NAND uh, NDAs are new towns for the people of Hong Kong, but what is the evidence? Uh, uh, there's The idea is so vague, you only talk about concepts. We know that um, there is it's not founded on any substance. If uh, it's, um, there is a concrete plan, why do you have to be so evasive? Many have come here to uh, speak. They have um, good grounds, and then they could really um, shut you up completely. The government only plays lip service. It only talks about ideas and philosophy, but it won't come up with any concrete policies, and it won't um, um, try to convince people with reasons. So that's why it doesn't matter what plans the government come up with, like the old age living allowance and so on, they all stop because the public have no trust in the government, and there's a reason for that. Just a few days ago, in the media, it's reported that uh, Professor Lao Siu Kai, the former um, head of CPU, 
said that uh, internally the NENS NDA plan has to do with um, integration with the mainland. So, so that's why um, there is uh, ev there is good ground why people are accusing the NENS development as uh, building luxury housing for the mainland region and so on. Now, I don't think you should um, maintain a, a slip upper lip. I think this government might as well just sacrifice itself and fold up. Mr. Chen came in from Neo Democrats. Thank you. I'm from the um, I'm representative of Neo Democrats. Um, and uh, I also teach at the CU Hong Kong. So I do have some um, knowledge about this whole plan. Now, f uh, some years ago, I wrote an article on super prison. Actually, the easiest way um, that actually is not necessary to build super jail. You just need to expand existing penal institutions. No, I try to. I'm uh, sorry if I um, compare the NAND NDAs to the prison, uh, but you know that there is poor transportation support facilities. Anyway, that's not my main point. Before I came to the meeting, I heard um, several viewpoints. Those who support um, NAND NDAs, uh, they base their support on um, unsustainable concept that's uh, rather outdated. That is because uh, there's a uh, um, population need, so there's ne uh, there's development need, and then we should um, press ahead with the development. But that's really against the concept of sustainable development. Now, today we see a lot of unsustainable development. It destroys our environment. It destroys the rural areas. And then uh, we've also heard views in support of the um, plan saying that there is a need um, on uh, at the state level so we can see that planning is being imposed on us and then there are residents who say you should resume my land as soon as possible because if there are plenty who want to sell the land for profit but of course no one ever mentioned this point uh, that is why did the government propose the planning in the first place because they, they wanted more land and we, we can see that um, the land won't be available by 2022. There is no long-term planning. Definitely, there's no long-term population planning or uh, long-term farming development policy. We can see that the uh, an end, uh, NDA study cannot really address the immediate problems. And uh, actually, this uh, plan is n not realistic. You are putting. Uh, you could just um, spread out the hundred odd thousand people in nine new towns. The new towns will be more than able to accommodate these people. And that's the only way to address the uh, pressing housing needs. Now, uh, um, in sufficient consultation, I won't dwell on that. I'd like to stress the point on uh, industries with a clear advantage. Uh, other places are already doing it. Fo Tan, Kwai Chong, I know many friends from universities, they have um, already chemical testing plants in these uh, places. I don't know what sort of um, the industries with a clear advantage we're going to develop in uh, the NDAs. Mr. Lang Chen Yin. Many just now gave reasons why they oppose the plan. I'd like to make two points. One, in the 70s, uh, when we developed new towns, Many were affected by uh, by clearance. Uh, on Locust uh, Village, uh, Shoyun uh, Village, and so on. Every time when new towns are developed, um, the villagers and farmers are the first to be hit. The government says that uh, there is housing need, and then you think you can address the question of housing justice. I think you're putting the cart before the horse. Because if you do not come up with progressive policy, you don't do your job. You only care about how to develop, and you only care about mainland uh, Shenzhen, Hong Kong integration. You only care about um, placing TV commercials. That government should step down. And in the consultation, you did consult the mainland uh, during stage one of public engagement. But in the consultation paper, did you ever put their views clearly? No, never. 
and then uh, in the very, very stages of the PAE, you kept um, changing the theme, you kept moving the goalpost. It was new development, now it's new town development. You said you want to address housing needs. But uh, from uh, statistics, we know that we have 300,000 vacant units, and there's still 2,100 hectares of land that could address our housing needs. And we are just talking about 200,000 on the waiting list for public rental housing. Why do you have to come to an end? Why do you have to bother us? Can you prove to us that uh, you are not uh, trying to promote um, Shenzhen Hong Kong integration? So if you do not withdraw the plan, you might as well just step down. As simple as that. If I could just make one more point because I still have a minute. When you conducted public engagement, every time you did not take into account the, uh, you, know, you do not get right the aspirations and the location of various villages. Where do you put these people? Um, are you not pit, uh, pit, uh, treating them the same as the four mil seven million people? Shouldn't you consult them first? Be they are the one who live there. Have you got it wrong? Have you got it right? Really, I think you're um, trying to impose colonial rule again on the people of Hong Kong. You're shameless. Mr. Lam Wei Leung. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Permanent Secretary, members, and um, deputations here. I was born in the Tongfeng district of Kutong village, and I grew up in the Tukong uh, Kutong village. I'm a villager there, I'm speaking in that capacity. And um, I've actually con um, talked to many villagers, and now I'm summing up their views and aspirations. Oh, when as soon as the government announced the its um, intention to develop um, land, um, developers have been um, amassing land in land, and now in the latest um, land uh, NDA plan, Kutong North is included, and you have had so far uh, called three stages of public engagement. And I think um, very soon the government will come to a decision on the three in one. Um, Kutong North development, that is whether you're going to proceed with development or whether you're going to shelf it as you've done in the past. In any case, Kutong villagers have been suffering for more than a decade. Now, I've had uh, many discussions with Kutong villagers. I've come up t uh, with such conclusions. F firstly, if the government decides to proceed with development, you have to um, formulate a plan on rehousing on resettling Kutong village. You should accede to the majority aspiration for um, preservation of the village and their lifestyle. And there should be a site for resettling the entire village. So villagers could continue to stay together as a village. But if you're going to shelve the, the plan, you should make that clear. Because villagers will then be able to make a decision whether they're going to repair their dilapidated houses or not. And um, if you're going to shelf development, then for or the development on private land should be frozen, so that villagers will not suffer again or be bullied again by the um, developers. Now, for villagers affected, the number of them, the number of uh, huts, and so I, I hope you will do a proper survey and registration. Because there are others who do not originally reside in Tokong, uh, Kutong village, they try to move in and they keep uh, bothering us. Uh, we should stop that. Thank you. Mr. Lao Miuxing, thank you. I'm a vi Kutong villager. The 17th speaker, the Xiang Shui Rural Committee chairman. Uh, there's a letter. It's signed by Hao Chi Kung, and I would like to give my views. The Shang Shui Rural Committee spoke as a body. We should respect um, the views given, but those are just views of the um, Rural Committee. They do not represent others, including Kutong villagers. Mr. Hao Chi Kung, Chairman of the Shang Shui Rural Committee, have um, uh, take advantage of his capacity 
to represent Kutong villages illegitimately. Now, Putong is one village in Xiangshui rural areas. Uh, they should communicate with us, and they should try to sum up the majority views of villages. Mr. Hao Chi Kang did that. He did communicate with us. But the, the aspiration we've um, expressed is uh, no demolition, no removal. It's not, as he put it, that is 90% of the villagers agree to compensation and removal. Now, the, there was a villagers uh, meeting, actually not once, twice. There were meetings of, of Kutong villagers. The meetings were recognized by the uh, district offers, and we have unanimously voted in favor of no removal and no clearance. Mr. Hao Chi Kang is the chairman of the Xiangshui Rural Committee. He has given a misrepresentation of our position. He treated villagers as objects. He thinks that he can just pay us and the objects could be removed. And he said that 90% of us are more than happy to move as long as we are paid, but that's not the case. As some others said, you know, anti villagers. We are very different from people uh, living in the cities, the city dwellers. Now you, you keep moving from one unit to another. Mr. Lau, you are an anti resident. You know exactly uh, the bond we have to our village. The village is our root. Doesn't matter where we move, the village remains our hometown. If you demolish our village, we have nothing. Kutong village is not a an indigenous village, but still it's had a, a history of over a century. Four generations of my family, including myself, been there. We've been there for sixty years. We've put in a lot of effort in building up Kutong village. It's not about paying us or paying us uh, a sum of money and then we would just move. It's not about that. It's not like um, buying a flat or selling a flat. That's investment, doing that in the urban area. So I'm sorry. That's all I'd like to say. Next, Ms. Yu Ying Kun. Good morning. While I'm not eloquent, I'm little educated, but I've lived in Kutong for 50 years. I came uh, when I was in my teen. I had no family, no one, but I worked very hard farming. Mm, you know, my children don't take much care of us. Now, if you want to resume Kutong village, where can I move? If you move me to a public housing, I can't afford to pay the rent, and I don't want to collect um, CSSA. I hope you will withdraw your proposal to resume Kutong. That's all I'd like to say. I'm just speaking from my heart. That's all. Thank you. Next, Ms. Ko Tai Chair. I'm Ko Tai Chair. Good morning, members. Again, I'm not um, very good at expressing myself. So I asked for your four parents. I know nothing. I know nothing at all. I've lived in Kutong for over three decades. I have four children. My husband has passed away. So I don't have a husband to support me. If you demolish my house, I have nowhere to stay. I will have to sleep on the street. No one will pity me. Well, I really don't know what to say. My children, they just scrape a living. They can't afford to support me because they have their own families as well. And I, Ko Tai Chair, am by myself. So do you really want me to sleep on the street. You know, the government uh, is supposed to look after people. I s see you as uh, like my parents. You should take care of me. Now, I don't know what to say. I'm not good at um, speaking. No, it's just fine. Just speak from your heart. It's good enough. Thank you. Mr. Chen Ming Chai. I'm a Kutong villager. Also, I'm not good at speaking. 
expressing myself. You know, in I just heard that um, our houses are to be demolished soon. But then I haven't heard uh, what the resettlement arrangement is. Now I won't, uh, not to mention that I can't afford um, housing unit. I have problems feeding myself, so I don't know what to do. I'm feeling desperate. I, I don't know how, uh, what to say, and that's all I'd like to say because I really uh, am confused and very anxious. Ms. Chung Hyu Ching. I'm a Kutung villager, Mr. Chairman. I'm not happy that the uh, Secretary is not here today. But anyway, Mr. Chow, please listen to me. Um, when we had, when you had the um, PE3, the Secretary said something, I remembered it well. The Secretary said uh, we have a limited land and a dense population. There's not enough land supply. That's why we must develop land we, because we need to provide land for people of Hong Kong. Yes, we learned um, from primary school education that Hong Kong has a lot of mountains, very limited land supply. Yes, I'm sure the Secretary also learned the same knowledge from school as I did. But then, unfortunately, you don't have the common sense to wonder why he's in his post. Now, 30% of the land is left idle. It's not developed yet. The government has over a 1,000 hectares of land reserve. But then in Nantes, we only have 170 hectares of land. There's no need to uproot us. Now, you say that uh, Nantes NDA study is definitely not about uh, Shenzhen Hong Kong integration just because there's not enough land, so you need to develop the area. But I really don't get it. So if you no plan to um, integrate with Shenzhen, then why must you um, develop an area with a population of 10,000 you know, develop an area where there's already a population of 10,000. Why don't you develop um, uh, 1,000 hectares of land where, uh, which is not occupied at the moment? Now, I don't see why, uh, unless it's about uh, Shenzhen Hong Kong integration, or perhaps it's about um, offering benefits to developers. I don't see how this plan is relevant to the people of Hong Kong. Mr. Chow, you have a uh, um, comfortable home. You just um, um, plan development, um, looking at the Google Maps, you know how many happy homes you're going to destroy. Now, the Kutung village uh, was established in 1900. Many old people living there, they are used to the way of life there. It's uh, not humane to make them move. I've, um, I'm only 19. I've lived here for, for only that long, but still I'm not willing to leave Kutung village. If you're not really uh, planning to promote uh, Shenzhen Hong Kong integration and so on, and there, is, there are other land plots such as the golf course that could be developed. Well, then why must you still develop Nant? In your TV commercial, you said that the Nant is a new town for Hong Kong people. I see that I'm sacrificing my happiness for the people of Hong Kong. So are you saying that I'm not a Hong Kong person? I also have three stars on, three asterisks on my uh, Hong Kong ID card. So why must you destroy my home for the benefit of others? So uh, does it mean that we don't have to pay tax? Then why do you still send us uh, tax uh, demand notes? So you, you don't treat us as part of Hong Kong pe uh, the people. I think you have to uh, phase up to the interests of non-indigenous villagers. Now, I'm a university student now. I uh, hope that I won't lose the very little trust I have left in the government. Please withdraw the plan. Please restore. Please return the way of uh, the usual way of life to us. Thank you, Mr. Chung Ting Yen. Chairman. Good afternoon, members. Good afternoon. I'm a Hong Kong. I'm also a non-indigenous resident. Well, we never questioned what we learned in the primary school that Hong Kong is a small place with a huge population. Now, in the NENT NDA development, uh, the administration said that, that, um, that we have limited land supply, but in fact, a lot of uh, land is just sitting idle, undeveloped. There is over 1,000 1, hectares in our land reserve. Comparing to the 800 hectares in the NENT NDA development, it's uh, nothing. Well, in fact, uh, you then changed tag. You said that uh, only 10% would be used for public housing. How can you call this efficient use of um, land resources? You have land on the land reserve, and then you said that um, you do not have land. And 
Then you have to remove uh, villages in the uh, MENT, and then you said that only 10% were used for public housing. You talk about the urgent need for um, land, um, for uh, NDAs to meet the housing needs. If you want to gain trust from the public, you should uh, withdraw the plan and don't insult our intelligence. Next, uh, Jay Yim Ha. Well, I'm worried uh, about uh, Secretary for Development, Mr. Paul Chan. He's not here. I hope that uh, everything is uh, well with him. I'm here mainly for um, meeting with uh, Paul Chan. In fact, uh, he has been writing newspaper articles in Tsing Tao daily uh, since 2003. And in fact, I um, kept his article. He talked about his um, poor background. He uh, once lived in squatter huts, and then and, uh, later on, he lived in a public housing unit. The reason is that uh, during one Chinese New Year, his mother took them out uh, for a uh, family gathering, and it was the first day of the Chinese New Year. And when they came back, the whole of uh, Diamond Hill was burned down, and because of the blaze, he was allocated a PRX unit. So today, I'm really, I'm really worried about you, Mr. Paul Chan. You claim yourself to be a Christian. Then you should act like a Christian. You should uphold justice. You should be compassionate. You should be modest. You should walk with God. You live in Leighton Hill, and you get yourself involved in subdivided flats. Your home was once burned down, and now you are tearing down my home. Are you a Christian? Now, the other official, Mr. Franklin Lamb, I am also very worried about him. He hasn't appeared in meetings. He has taken leave. Well, is he sick? Franklin Lamb sold his properties to as he said, support his aged mother and uh, a priest, uh, so to speak. If I were his mother, I would not use his money. I'd rather hang myself than to use the dirty money. He said in his article in 8 AM 730 that those uh, 10,000 odd people should sacrifice their homes for the benefit of the uh, general public. So they sh um, should um, move away from the area. But Franklin Lamb, you have 23 properties, and you should really do something good. Go back to the church, ask your pastor or your priest whether this, is, uh, the, this, sh this should be the way for a Christian. Mr. Chong Wai Kuang, for the Indian T and J development. The administration says that Hong Kong do, does not have sufficient land, but according to the electrical papers, the administration already told us that we have four thousand over four thousand hectares of land. We have plenty of land in Hong Kong, and then they changed version. They said that only two thousand two hundred hectares are available for housing. And they will be squandering billions of, or, or uh, an unknown um, amount of money for the Nan Ten DA development. In fact, stage one population intake won't take place until the completion of the NDA in 2022. So the development cannot really address the present housing demand. And according to the latest population projections conducted by the CNSD, in fact, the population projection in by 2030 
will not be um, as um, many as 8.4 million. We won't reach 8.4 million population until 2040, and most of the population uh, increase would come from outsiders coming to Hong Kong. So if the administration could adjust their housing policy, they would uh, already be able to resolve the housing issues. So the administration should not use housing needs as an excuse to develop the NENT NDA because this is the last piece of uh, green space left. In that area, we have uh, our own industrial areas. We have our soy sauce factory. You may call this low value added industries and you should um, introduce high value added sectors. But this is our traditional industry. We all need soy sauce and there is also local farmland. So honorable members, please look after Hong Kong's future. This is the last place in Hong Kong in which we can practice local farming, in which we can produce locally our own soy sauce. Don't use up all the land on building uh, homes. There is no such urgent housing need. Next. Kwok Fong Mui. Chairman members, good afternoon. I live in Kutong Village. I'm Kwok Fong Mui. I am here to tell you that I do not want to move. I do not want to have my place demolished. I love that place. The air is good The and it's spacious. My husband is in the furniture business. We do not have the means to rent or buy a factory. We produce the furniture at home. This is all uh, he is good at, making furniture. If you drive us away, what will happen to us? We can't even make ends meet. So no removal, no demolition, please. If our home is to be cleared, is it really the way to conduct consultation? You said that uh, there were three rounds of consultation, but nobody informed each and every household of the arrangement. There is an API about the NEN. TNDA development, but the plan hasn't been approved, and we're still here. I don't know whether you're trying to brainwash people. I hope you can help us as well, otherwise we won't be able to make ends meet. I'm not going to move or have my place removed. Now, some deputations have already left, and I'd like to remind deputations and individuals to leave your signed written submission with the Secretariat so that your views can be followed up on. Thank you. How many more? All gone? Oh, so, Deputations and individuals have already spoken. The floor will be open to members for questions. I suggest that each member can speak for three minutes, including a reply from the administration. Please be brief and concise. First member, Ms. Emily Lau. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, deputations, for coming to LegCo today. We will be receiving 130 deputations throughout the day, and next Saturday there will be another few hundred deputations as we're holding another whole day hearing. So this is quite confidential, uh, controversial. Just now, a Miss Ao Yang asked about the clearance arrangement, and many students during this session 
spoke, um, they understood that you cannot just give compensation for clearing the village. And for Kutong village, well, just now villagers um, were very emotional. And Mr. Hao Chi Kang, uh, it seems, uh, could not uh, represent them. So I hope that um, the rural committee can deal uh, can deal with this issue, and uh, there is also a problem with the sewage treatment works. So we have landmines everywhere. I'd like to ask Professor Choi, the uh, Hong Kong Institute of um, Engineers. Well, just now he said that the administration should act full steam ahead as soon as possible. So, Professor. You have been here this morning uh, after hearing from deputations. What do you think should be done to implement this plan as soon as possible? Professor Choi, your response? Well, this is the view of the HKIE. We think that the administration should put the interests of the whole of Hong Kong first if it's in line with the interest of the general public, then the plan should uh, be implemented as soon as possible. Well, Professor, uh, my question is, you have heard so many different views. So as your professional, or, or as you're representing the professional sector, what advice can you give? Would you say that uh, we can just drive all the bulldozers uh, in, and that will be um, putting the interests of the general public first? Any good ideas, Professor Choi? Well, Chairman, I am not here to be questioned. I didn't anticipate uh, taking questions. I'm just asking for advice. Well, just now I already said that the interest of the general public should be put first. And for the specific details, I am very confident, and I believe that the administration will consider all the details. All right, Mr. Gary Fan. Two questions. Just now, I haven't had the opportunity to ask Mr. Chow, the Permanent Secretary. Now, the deputations have spoken. They uh, talked about the keeping of the co-op society and the village office and that the original lifestyle should be uh, preserved. So, Mr. Chow, according to the development direction, is it the case that these demands cannot be met? Is it the case that, as said by Mr. Michael Choi, the only way out is to offer compensation? Next, Mr. Tam Hoi Pong uh, from Green Sands talked about the handling of the golf course, and I'd like to uh, give my time to Mr. Tam to talk about this issue. Mr. Tam. Thank you. I thought Mr. Chow, Permanent Secretary, was going to answer the question. So um, just uh, to spend a minute, the plight is that uh, there are existing tenants in the three NDAs, and there are uh, lands um, bought by private developers as well. So as far as resumption of land is concerned, we can anticipate um, a big fight. And in fact, there is a golf course covering 170 hectares, and there are um, a couple of uh, golf courses uh, in the Southern District, Repouse Bay, and the, in Sai Kong as well. The administration can consider utilizing the these uh, golf courses in order to, to save a battle. The selling point uh, is that we hope that a theme park um, similar to uh, what we had in Lang Chi Kok in the past uh, can be built there. We think that if we have a theme park or a bazaar there that can cater for the needs of the grassroots, it can properly uh, fulfill its functions. 
So I hope the administration would consider utilizing the golf course. And would uh, Mr. Chow please uh, respond whether uh, this will be considered by the administration? Now, replying to Mr. Gary Fan's first question, the administration understands that affected uh, understands the concerns or requests of affected residents and farmers in terms of our planning work and implementation in terms of rehousing and compensation arrangements, we hope that these can be properly done to mitigate the impact on them. But as I said during the last session, inevitably some residents will be affected by the development plan. Uh, I sh shall not repeat the point about uh, agricultural farming. And during the last session, I already covered uh, the other point as well. Uh, for the golf course is still in use at the moment, we must consider the suitability and see whether land can be released for other uses. There are over 10,000 people living in these three existing NDAs, um, and the local residents, it seems, are not as important as a golf course. Uh, you have heard the views, right? Uh, yes, we've heard the view, but I think the relevant policy bureaus have their own considerations. Dr. Kenneth Chan. Now, I'd like the uh, Green Sands representative to say a bit more in terms of the use, use of the golf course. Mr. Chow, can you respond more clearly? Are you going to consider it or not, or are you going to consider it as a preliminary alternative proposal? I understand that the administration needs coordination among departments. I understand that you cannot represent other bureaus or departments. But after receiving this message, what is your preliminary thinking? Are you going to consider it or not? And we always talk about uh, engaging the public, uh, putting people first, etc. As I said uh, during the last session, I may be a newcomer to this council, but I see that as far as the consultation of the new development is concerned, many indigenous or non-indigenous residents have said that they have never been consulted or somehow they were represented by somebody unknown to them. I understand that three rounds of public consultations have taken place. It's hard to go back. But now there is a group of residents in front of you telling you that they want no removal and no clearance. Uh, just now we talk about the simple measures like uh, compensation and rehousing arrangements. But have you really thought about further assistance or further planning? to avoid the, the bombs and landmines. Now, the relevant bureau has its own policy concerning the recreational grounds or the golf course, and we have been engaged in the planning for this plan for many years. Even, up, even if we make the decision today, we can only get the first piece of land by in 2022. So even if we resume the golf course, it cannot replace the three NDAs. Transportation has been mentioned by many deputations. It is indeed an important issue. That's why we propose to have a rail station in Kutong. Now, Mr. Chen has said that there are so many views. I have to stress that even though the third public engagement exercise has come to an end, we still listen to views. And this is uh, today is a very good opportunity for us to collect views for further consideration. So we can give better arrangements to those affected. Next, Mr. Albert Chen. Chairman, the third public engagement exercise may be the last in terms of consultation. Now, for removal, rehousing, compensation, 
plans. In fact, proposals have been endorsed in the last logical session the, uh, in the Finance Committee. I wonder if comprehensive consultation has been uh, carried out on many occasions. For example, Finance Committee and the Development Panel, the administration kept saying they had carried out comprehensive consultation and they got the endorsement of most of the residents. I'm not worried about the support they could get from the indigenous residents. They will get it. However, for the non-indigenous residents, the government said they had lots of meetings with this group. And today we have lots of groups here. At the Finance Committee in the last term, that is before Mr. Gary Chen was here, on that committee, the compensation package was passed. But lots of lawmakers are raising questions. Even in the last term, before Mr. Fernando Cheng came into the council, I already raised this question. Now, Mr. Chow, at that time, the administration denied the consultation was not proper. The proposal endorsed in the last administration mainly concerned Liantang and Liantang and Chokyun village, village was covered. At that time, we reported the result of the consultation with the villagers. We also explained further on the consultant's report. and compensation for land resumption. Compensation for Liantang and Xiangyuan Wai. The excretion allowance compensation. Now, in fact, the government has already made it clear that they, these are outdated and they may not be able to respond to the housing needs and the interests of the residents affected under the existing plan. We are now reviewing the packages. We hope we can complete the review next year so that we can give better arrangements to the residents. Next, Mr. Tian. Before I enter politics, I'm more uh, tutored to the idea that we should follow the majority views. Most people would like to have a development. How can we strike a balance between this group and that of the minority? Those who are for majority will say that we should have development then. But then in the past few years, I visited the community and my views change. Hong Kong people are wealthier than the past. It's not like uh, in the past uh, people could hardly make ends meet. So I think we should strike a balance between the interests of different groups. Some non-indigenous residents, they are farmers all along. If you rehouse or relocate them, they cannot do what they like most in life. On the other hand, land resources is valuable. If someone occupies a large piece of land and stands in the way of financial development, then what should we do? Now, can we help these people to 
change the mode of operation. For example, uh, um, help them to have organic farming. We can also look into this um, for fishing. People are worried about the safety of mainland food. That's why I think we can consider moving towards high value added food industry. That's why I have reservation about having housing development alone. The government should think about how to help these people to change another trade. Yes, we want to have development, but we should also strike a balance. Mr. Tam mentioned MTRO stations. HOS is a kind of subsidized housing. I don't think it should be put over MTRO stations. HOS should be for the, the first owners, first time owners. And for these residents, they do not even need parking spaces. Ms. Ho, thank you, Chairman. In the first two public engagement exercises and in Lashko discussion on opening up boundary areas, we raised the issue of non-indigenous residents. They should be treated equally as the indigenous residents. We reiterate this point on many occasions. You touch upon many villages with indigenous people under the NENT development. The government has to consider a lot of factors in turning the golf course into a housing lot. Permanent Secretary, can you tell us what these factors are? The golf course is there to provide a place for a small number of people to have fun. In compared to the interest of conservation and the housing needs of the majority, which group should you give um, priority to? You said the golf course can only be resumed in 2020 or even 2022. In PE1, the population projection shrinks from 8.9 million to 8.4 million, but then you know the growth rate of population is really low in Hong Kong. Even if we have 150 one-way permit coming to Hong Kong every day, we only have a small number of increase. That means there is room for maneuver in terms of population. Now, at the beginning, you said you need land for development. But we know now that you made mistakes in terms of population projection. How come we cannot resume the golf course to take away this piece of land for leisure of a small number of people for the planning of the majority? Population projection. We do census regularly. So there is not a matter of whether there are mistakes or not. We just have to do the census. So we know in the next 30 years, we have a growth of 1.4 million people. So the number of household on average is um, coming down. That means the average number of people in a household, the size, uh, is actually shrinking from uh, 3.1 to 2.9. There's more reason than for you not to allot the land for luxury housing. You allot more lands, allocate more land for uh, luxury housing than uh, reasonably sized house, houses. 
I have to say that most of the flats provided under the plan are small and medium sized flats to respond to the various housing needs of people. Next, Mr. Fernando Chung. Thank you, Chairman. I think and the N E N T development generates lots of controversy. It seems at the beginning they want to have integration. The land is very close to the northern boundary. And you say the development is for Hong Kong people. The, the new town is for Hong Kong people. I don't think it's reasonable. Despite the opposition, the strong opposition, you air the APIs. You just try to uh, bulldoze over everything. And you're being unfair to the local residents. The director of planning it, it retires and he agrees that there is no comprehensive consultation for the plan. He agrees that because of the large scope of the plan, it is imp impossible to consult every resident. But then those affected do not even know about the existence of this plan. So I think the consultation is really a failure. In Shen Shui Heng, People tell you they have been tolerating this sewage treatment plant and any extension is not going to work. You resume farmland. How come you do not consider farming as a kind of industry? Instead, you resume the land for luxury housing. You have to answer these questions. So. What's the next step for the administration? They keep they they say they will consolidate views collected and make appropriate adjustment. When will the amended plan be tabled? When will you submit funding application? Can you give us a specific plan for future actions? On the development panel we said we hope in the first half of next year we with the views collected in PE3 and views collected this weekend and next weekend we will try to incorporate all these views in the amended plan we hope we can complete this in the in the Second half of the of next year, but you first you said uh, the first half. Now you said it's the uh, second half, so it's June. June. We hope by June um, we can come up with the amended plan with all the views collected. What about the timetable for funding application? We do not have that yet because we're still in the planning stage. We're talking about a large area, but then so the funding application will come to Lushko uh, um, in different stages. I'm very glad to hear that there will be a concrete, there is a concrete timetable. In June next year, the government will submit the amended package to Lushko. Now I want to follow up on my question, which has not been answered. I asked about the ratio. The permanent secretary said that the uh, public housing can amount to 50% of public housings, and uh, you focus on low density houses. Uh, flats will be of small and medium size. Now, I want to follow up on the principle of Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong people. This principle is the saying against accusation that you're selling out Hong Kong. But under this principle, you haven't told us about the ratio. Just now, residents from Kutung told us their views have been distorted. The village heads, village representatives are here to speak on their behalf. They say most villagers 
uh, for the development plan. So, does the administration think that you haven't done a good consultation, and will you have will you put forward a better consultation? Because now that people are telling you that their views have been distorted. Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong people. Even if we roll it out today, we can only get the first piece of land in 2022. And we do not know what the property market and the housing development will be like by then. That's why we we have to see whether we have to look at these factors before we decide whether we roll out the principle. Now everyone can submit their views as interpretation. So I don't think anyone can claim their views have been distorted. So you cannot tell us the ratio. Then there's, it's all um, empty talk about this uh, Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people. Maybe by 2020, we will have been integrated with the mainland. Then we don't, don't need to talk about main Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong residents then. We've said already half, more than half would be public housing. When of course only permanent Hong Kong residents could apply for public housing. And for the majority of the private housing Developments, we say most of them would be uh, would be small to medium sized unit, but um, we're talking about over a decade from now. So we, if you you can't, we can't really say how many units there will be. In that case, stop talking about Hong Kong people for Hong Kong Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong land uh, for Hong Kong people. Just use figures, you know, high density housing and small to medium sized unit. I have to mention. Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong residents because that is our new policy. If there is a need to provide Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people in the NAND NDAs, we will do so. Ms. Sit Ho. The Permanent Secretary said everybody could write. They could write in their views. But just now you see uh, villagers like Ko Tai Che, they said they, wouldn't, they didn't know how to express themselves and we believe in them. They can't write to you, they can't even read your documents. So how are you going to um, t cater for this group of villagers? Do you need to go to each household and, uh, and consult them? Because there is a group of res villagers who do not know what you're doing, but their houses will be demolished. You can't say that we've done three stages of PA, you never wrote in, so you've given up on your right, but then you are going to demolish their houses, they do not know about it. So how are you going to deal with that? Well, you know, um, give, making submissions, um, they don't just they can write, they can send emails, but they can't even write. How can can they send in emails? No, but then my colleagues are here. All three colleagues are here following the proceedings. They will be able to hear all the views. Thank you, Ms. Emily Lau. I hope this Prime Secretary has heard all the views. Perhaps you should follow up. Uh, perhaps with the uh, Hong Yu Cook too. Let's see if the um, rural committee chairman re did not represent the villagers, whether villagers have been misrepresented. Please find out and then come back to us. Can you do that, Permanent Secretary? Yes, we'll follow up. Dr. Fernando Chung. Uh, no, no, Mr. Chairman, can I just um, stress uh, again? You know, there are many channels to express views. Today is an occasion to express views, and today we've heard clearly all the views expressed. Dr. Fernando Zhang, for these three NDAs, there are already outlined zoning plans. The government has information on the sort of housing units to be made available, so the government has the duty. Yes, the administration has completed three stages of public engagement, but it's going to prepare another paper, right? Um, just now, the permanent secretary said that before June next year, they will sum up all the views and they will come up with, um, I don't know if it's the final conclusion, but they will come up with some conclusions. I think during that period they have the duty to reach out to every household in the three areas. The government should inform the households that they're now in stage three of public engagement. 
and before they prepare their final papers, these residents could still make known their views. They should have the duty to do so. They shouldn't treat these as any members of the public. These are the people to be directly affected. Their houses could be demolished. In fact, an entire village could just vanish. So uh, you have the duty to do so. Can you um, undertake to do so? Yes, we've heard the views. We will go back and talk to my colleagues about it. The permanent secretary told closely the line of uh, Mr. Paul Chen about Hong Kong properties for Hong Kong residents. He gave exactly the same answer that uh, Mr. Paul Chen gave at the council meeting. But I think that's pretty prosperous. We're here, we're talking about long-term planning. And you're talking about long-term housing needs, and you say you have no information, especially about the housing needs in the private market. That's why you wouldn't tell us um, what the percentage of Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people is. But you could give a percentage. You could just suggest nearer the time, but you choose not to do that. So you're hiding, hiding behind that pretext. But then what you said, uh, in one way, is different from what um, Paul Chen said. Paul Chen said that uh, in the first quarter of next year, there would be the review findings, especially in adjusting the housing mix between public and private housing. But then just now, the Prime Secretary has already extended the that, um, the time frame from the first quarter to the s second quarter. So who's right, really? Paper number CB one sixty one um, thirteen twelve to thirteen bracket 05, paragraph thirty one. I could read it out, can I? The administration expects that um, in the first half of 2013, uh, we will be able to, to publish a report on stage three of the public engagement. Thank you. I think we spent a lot of time on the first and second sessions. In the afternoon, there will be two more sessions. Next week, there will also be two sessions. So there will be plenty of time for members to ask questions. Perhaps um, it's almost time. Maybe it's time for a lunch break. Can I just say one more thing? Please go and inform each and every household. Yes, please. I, uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for coming to the meeting. It's now a lunch break. We'll resume at 2.30 p.m. Members and government representatives, please come back on time to resume our meeting. Thank you.